Is AI coming for your marketing jobs? Yes and no. You know, we'll see where things take us. Change is coming way too fast for us to totally predict where it's going, but it's coming after some of them. The good news is if you're listening to a podcast like this or this one, you're probably safe. Your job is going to change a ton, but it's uh, not going to go away because you're the type of person who craves that growth, is not scared by the technology, um, or at least is not so scared that you're not willing to learn a little bit and, and evolve, uh, which is, that's what's coming. Get used to change. Uh, we're all going to have to get used to it uh, as time goes by. Welcome to the Frustrated by Your Marketing Podcast. This is the start of season two. We're going to have more about that at the end of the episode. You can see I'm uh, dressed up for the occasion. I got some plants behind me. We're, uh, we got a lot of changes coming and I'll go over that at the end. But today we're talking about, is AI coming from marketing jobs? Where do I see careers going in the marketing industry over the next two, three, five, ten 10 years and what you can do to be prepared? That's where we're going. So Sam Altman, he's like the godfather of AI. He's the CEO of OpenAI and he has a quote that has been often misquoted, but is worth repeating right now. So his quote is, Artificial general intelligence, which is not where we are now, that's sort of the next step. That's when artificial intelligence can actually think on its own, whatever that means. He feels like it will transform marketing with 95% of tasks currently performed by marketing agencies, strategists, and creative professionals being handled by AI. So that's where he sees it going. Whether it's 95 or 80 or 75, does it really matter? Uh, you know, AI is going to take a lot of our jobs and it's going to evolve a lot of our jobs, uh, and not just in the marketing industry, in all the industries, but marketing seems to be first on the chopping block. It seems to be the place where a lot of the um, imagination of what AI can do is is right now, and it's our industry, so that's why we're going to talk about that. And I've also read that currently, the predictions are that 25% of our marketing tasks could be done by AI right now. Probably not, but you know, currently being done by it, but could be. So that's a lot. That's... 25% of your workforce that could be replaced or 25% of people that need to be repurposed or 25% more clients that you could be bringing on. So big changes are coming for sure. And I think the um, the easy place it's going to start and has already started is are the boring and the repetitive tasks. So the stuff you don't want to do, the stuff that again is, I do this every week, I do this every hour, I do this every day. Those are the types of things that either AI will do or AI models will be able to replicate uh, with a little bit of human intervention. And you know that's, that's good news um, by and large. It's also a little bit bad news. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. You know, I, I, see, I see a big problem coming from that, uh, taking away some of the easy mundane stuff. But anyways, that's where it's going to go first. And then it's just going to go from there too. Again, marketing is, I see it as first on the chopping block, but every, every single uh, industry will be affected by AI. I, you know, there are crazy AI robots that I could see replacing the entire fast food chain workforce, except for maybe a manager to make sure that the, the bots don't break. You know, I could see it being used in, in construction. I could see it being used in finance. You know, it's it's going to affect every industry, but marketing is is first. And I think where it'll start first within our industry is the commodity business. So. If you are creating stock photos, if you're creating stock videos, if you're, if what you're creating is easily reused, you're gonna fall off first because, you know, what we're what AI is gonna help us to do is to generate that kind of stuff on our own. You know, you're now your own creative team, and so instead of having to go out and find that or pay that person to do that generic stuff. Or, or buy it from a generic source like a stock photo site, you know, you'll be able to create that on your own and you'll be able to use it in what you do. So those industries are going to be completely gone soon. And, you know, hopefully the creators there, those great photographers, great, you know, videographers, even blog writers, there are plenty of blog writers that create in mass um, or create for industries that can be reused. They're still good photographers, good writers, good videographers. So if they pivot and they create more specific stuff, they'll be fine. I have an analogy that um, I started to think about with AI. I'm going to call it the excavator analogy. It's a uh, frustrated by your marketing exclusive. I hope you like uh, this analogy. I, I came up with it driving my son to school. One of our friends, they're adding an addition to their house. And one day an excavator showed up uh, you know, to dig the new foundation. And then the next day there was a big hole and now there's a framing. 
And so I don't think anybody would argue that AI is a, a very, very um, powerful tool. And in this case, the analogy is it's like an excavator. So I think if you gave anybody who is somewhat intelligent an excavator on a flat field with no rocks and no pipes and no foundations nearby, no wires, no septic tanks and said, dig a big hole. And here's the, you know, here's the, uh, uh, you know, the the steps on how to do it, we'd be able to do that because there's nothing in our way. But that's not why excavators exist. Uh, They exist to dig holes near houses or on roads or, you know, wherever the construction site is. And being able to navigate that, those intricacies of what could go wrong either today, I bust a electrical pipe and all the power goes out or I electrocute myself or I, you know, or even tomorrow I you know, crack the foundation and five years from now that house has uh, leaking in their basement. So knowing how to navigate that, being able to foresee the problems, having that experience, that's what the best AI excavator drivers will be able to do. So think of yourself as that and, and just realize that you have that expertise in order to maneuver the way you need to, to do a better job. And because of that, uh, and this is the really good news for you. So you're listening to this, you care, you're, you know, whether you're at the very beginning of your career or you're more seasoned, you're somebody who is gaining expertise, has expertise. The job market in, in marketing, I, and, and probably again, all job markets, they're going to crave as people flood out of our industries, people with that inside knowledge that know how to use the AI better. If you're one of those people who have done this before and you're getting towards the end of your career, look for bigger paydays. Look for your company to you know, go out of their way to keep you from retiring or look for more clients to hire you because you have that expertise. And, and I think that it's an amazing thing to look at because you know, there is that sort of silver lining for us. Now, a hundred years from now, I don't know, but I'm thinking towards the end of all of our careers listening to this now. So whether you're, again, if you're, you know, in your twenties and just starting off or in your, you know, fifties and getting towards the end of your career, you know, you've got expertise and you'll be around for when a lot of the stuff gets sorted out and you're going to be, you're going to be coveted. So keep that in mind. That's like the, the happy place to be. And it'll hopefully you know, keep you from being too doomsday and too frustrated about what's going on. So that's that's a positive thing, right? The positive thing is you're going to be coveted. Your your paydays, if you're sticking around, if you are learning, you're going to make more. The thing that I fear and the reason why many of us won't stick around is burnout. And I mentioned this in the last episode that I did with Cody um, from Swell AI. And I think burnout is going to be a big problem in our industry and all industries because Again, the busy work, the repetitive work, the easy work, all of that is 100% going to be done by AI. So what does that leave us with? That leaves us with the cream, right? That leaves us with the harder stuff, the stuff that we're really getting paid to do, but it's only that. And so there's no downtime. There's no time for our mind to, to rest. So what does this mean for us? It means you're going to have to be more productive. It means you're going to have to you know, find ways to use your time better. Uh, I could see the eight hour workday, which is already 100% changing, changing completely. Maybe it's a two hour block of time and then, you know, sort of a mandatory rest for yourself, whether it's you go for a run or you go take a nap or you do something else, you know, the knowledge economy is changing. And I don't know if our brains can handle eight hours of that type of stressful work without burnout. And some people might, but I think most of us will need a little bit of change in order to handle it. So look for that and be wary of it. And if you're in a situation where you're a little bit in control of your hours, take those breaks and take that time. We'll, we'll again, we'll talk about it more in future episodes, but I, I see it as being a big problem, becoming bigger problem as we're managing more projects because that's what's going to happen. We're going to manage more projects and we're going to be able to do it more efficiently. And by doing that, we're going to have more load on our brains to do the high level stuff, the thinking, the storytelling, the part that really matters. And, um, and yeah, so, you know, I guess that's my that's my warning. So my my happy place is you're going to make more money, you're going to be more coveted. My warning is don't burn out while you're getting there because because that's coming too. And then what else do I see in the market? So I again in that last episode when I talked to Cody, uh, Swell AI is his company. They take video and, and audio content and they parse it out into blogs and show notes and 
you know, a bunch of different social posts and, and short videos and things like that. Watch for hundreds, if not thousands of competitors to Cody. I wouldn't want to be in his face, uh, to be totally honest, coming out over the next couple of years. Watch for them to merge, watch for them to quickly go out of business as fast as they came into business. Watch for OpenAI and Gemini and Bing and whoever to put out part parts of their core product that puts out entire sections of that industry. But try them all out. Um, they're usually pretty cheap. You know, the ones I found twenty, thirty dollars a month, replacing you know tens, if not hundreds, of hours uh, of time over the course of a year. So they more than pay for themselves, and um, you just have to find the one that's right for you. So look at those, and that's you know that's the piece. That's that's the right now, and and look for industry specific ones. So if you're in a very niche in, you know, industrial industry that deals with you know electrical parts for machines, and there's a you know, an AI GPT that works just for your industry and can help you do something in your industry. That's great. If, you're, if you have this, the, the expertise to create one of these, um, I could see marketers and, and people in industry creating their own too. do it because that's, those will, those are more safe. Again, it's, it's your story. It's your niche. So if you can niche something out, you're much safer than, than Cody is. And, and again, I wish him the best, but um, he's a generalist in this and the generalists are on the chopping block. There's, there's a lot of competition and AI can create new competition within months. And so the barrier to entry is, is so, uh, slight that, you know, people are going to, you know, be coming after you quickly. But if you've got something very niche and you can kind of focus on that and you know, an industry or, you know, a topic do that, you can, you can do that with, with the AI and you'll, you'll be even stronger. Okay. And then, you know, the, I guess the thing that I want to, to leave you all with is, you know, the, a final sort of not really warning, but a, a final, um, call to action for you is be in the people business, you know? So AI is, um, disgenuine <laughs> by large, right? It's, it's not, it's not a genuine creation. It is a conglomeration of things. It is not unique. It is, um, but it's fast and it's oftentimes accurate, although not always the case. But if you're in the people business, if you make one-to-one -one connections with people, if you can learn about that human component of that business that you work with or of your own business, whether it's something you own or a place that you work for, you'll be more valuable. And then you could, again, talk to the tools and and add that element to it. So be in the people business and be in the, the problem-solving business. You know, one of the things I've always done at Skyline is and not always as much anymore, but I, I always say yes to a problem as long as it's in marketing. You know, can you know, have you ever done this? Can you look at this? Have you have you heard about this? Can and if somebody trusts you, they want you to do all the stuff because it's hard to find someone that you trust. So be a trusted source. Be in the people business. Know the people you work with. Work with them. Um, you know, if you can be in person with them, do it. You know, if not, get on Zoom. Add that personal connection because that will save you from from being replaced by AI either by them or by another agency that's more efficient because they'll know and trust you. And um, I guess this is sort of a, a one final, final warning is that I do see something coming to all industries and for, again, first marketing is that there's going to be big mistakes because of AI. And so be the person that's trusted to not make those mistakes and be the person that's going to be trusted when all the lawsuits come out. Because what's going to happen is someone's going to post, they're going to take over all their marketing for a big company. I don't know, probably not McDonald's big, but you know, a semi big brand is going to take all their marketing in house. They're going to fire their big agency and they're going to do everything with AI and they're going to do something and there's going to be a massive lawsuit. And then that's going to scare the hell out of all the little guys. And they're going to say, I don't want to use AI. That was a $50 million lawsuit because they used AI that pulled from some copyrighted material. Um, or they did something and pissed off half of their clients because, or half of their customers because they didn't think about it. So again, if you're in the people business and you're the trusted source, They'll come to you to use the tools. They won't. They they'll, they're going to become too scared of it. Right now, everybody's playing around with it, but eventually they're going to become like an excavator. Like if, again, if you gave me an excavator in the middle of a field and said, "Dig this hole," I'd do it. But if you said, "Do it near this house," I'd be very scared to do it because I wouldn't want to destroy the house or near power lines or anything like that. That's so. Be the person that can maneuver that excavator of AI near the power lines, near the sewers, so that your clients will trust you. And I think you'll do great. So again, thanks so much. That's, uh, I guess, a little positive, a little negative. Um, I hope you don't get too frustrated by everything that's going on. But 
we're going to talk about a ton about that going forward in this in this season. Again, it's season two. If you stuck around this far, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on in season two. So what's going on in season two? I am going to focus on shorter videos. And you'll notice uh, right now I'm by myself. Madison is not here. Um, she hasn't been with us on our guested episodes, but she was always by my side for uh, these individual episodes. And uh, I'm sad to say that Madison has, um, she's got a book coming out, which I'm very happy to say, uh, but she's moved off from Skyline and she's pursuing uh, her book and kind of trying to figure out what she's going to do next. Um, the name of the book is Consumable Love. It's a uh, spicy romance novel. And uh, when you hear this, it'll be out. I'll put the link in the show notes. We wish her the best. I hope she has the best time with her launch. I hope it's super successful. And then after that, she's going to figure out what she wants to do next. I know Madison mentioned she kind of misses the human interaction. You know, we're talking about this with AI of a remote company, which we are. And even though I'm super, super pro remote work, it's the one thing we can't recreate. And so I, I hope she finds that. I, I wish her the best. I know we'll keep in touch. She promised me she'd come back for our um, reviewing our yearly uh, 2024 predictions episode in December. So she'll be back on then. And um, and I really want to thank her for you know being with this podcast at the beginning while we were playing around in the sandbox and just kind of figuring out what we were doing and testing a bunch of things. Um, she was there. She um, It was a, a huge help. And, and I loved having her on the show and, and I'll miss her. Um, so anyways, one person, less of a conversation will allow me to make these a little bit shorter. And again, it's one of my commitments is to make these just a, a tiny bit shorter um, because I know everyone's busy. I'm busy and, and you're busy. So we're going to do that. I'm also going to double down on AI, as you can see by this episode. Probably mentioned it in almost every episode anyways, but it's the thing I'm most interested in right now and probably you as well. We're going to, we're going to talk about that a ton, you know, but I, again, I don't want to, I guess I don't want to rebrand this podcast as like the AI marketing minute or something like that, because I am obsessed with all things in marketing. I think about it all the time. I have all these crazy theories and I need a place to share them. So I don't want to pigeonhole myself and say, I'm only going to talk about AI, but probably mostly talk about AI. You know, the, the, I guess shorter videos, will I always be able to do that? I'm not sure. We're going to keep doing the guests. I love having the guests on. It's been a pleasure having them on, learning about what their their companies and their theories and their stories. So we're going to do that. Maybe they won't be an hour anymore, though. Uh, maybe we'll get them down to half an hour. I'm going to try to keep those uh, a little more locked in as well. I do want to thank our guests that have come come on for season one. I want to thank Kayla Wells. I want to thank Paul Phelan, Devo Tyndall, Justin Chen, Mike Begg, Reggie James, and Cody Schneider. Thank you so much for coming on, uh, trusting me uh, in season one uh, to tell your stories. And um, I hope to have you all back on at some point uh, in the future. Um, it was it was great to meet you. It's great to, to get to know about you and your company. So thank you so much for that. I want to thank uh, Bogdan. So uh, Bogdan is our uh, is our video editor and our sound engineer for this show. He's done an amazing job. He's pivoted a bunch of times as we've as we've changed things. You know the style has changed a bunch. It's going to change a bunch going forward. And I can't thank him enough for making us look great. So thank you, Bogdan, for everything you do. I really really appreciate it. Um, and I look forward to working with you. Um, going forward yeah, throughout the show. It's going to be it's going to be amazing. And uh, finally, I want to thank my brother, Mike. He's probably our biggest fan. Uh, he's been my biggest fan since he was born. You know, he's not in marketing, but he's listened to every episode. He's given me amazing feedback on the lighting. He's, you know, given me feedback on on topics and things to talk about and all of that stuff. So thanks, Mike. Uh, I appreciate you always having my back and uh, I couldn't do it without you. And uh, finally, something that I don't do enough, I, I want to ask you as a listener, if you've gotten this far, uh, you're probably uh, a dedicated listener. So thank you. I'd like you to subscribe, like, uh, share, uh, whatever you can do. I haven't asked for that much. You know, I've sort of thrown it out here and there, but it would be a huge help. Uh, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, if you can, you know, leave a review there. Um, subscribe if you're on YouTube. Leave a comment if you're on YouTube. I'd love to know. You know, I know that we've got some international listeners as well. Where are you coming from? What do you want to hear about? You know, again, we're going to talk about everything marketing, the focus on AI. The ultimate goal is to keep you a little less frustrated and make you more productive. That's my that's my sort of commitment to you. So if you if you would, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.